Hey everyone, welcome back to Netcode Hub channel. I am Frederick and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to master session outlet and session content for next level web development. It is something that I am really excited about and I can't wait to share it with you. This is a new feature in .NET 8 Blazor. Before we jump into it, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so you will never miss out our upcoming content. Also, if you enjoy what you see today, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. And stick around until the end because trust me, you want to miss it. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for your support. Whether you are a long time subscriber or a new viewer, I appreciate you being part of this community. All right, when you're done with this project, I'm going to put it at GitHub and you can just go in there, clone the source code, and I'll review. Also, I offer a training session for those who are interested in Blazor and .NET Core technology. If you're interested, you can write me through a mail specified in the video description. All right, so without much ado, let's jump into it. In Blazor, the concept of section outlet typically refers to a placeholder within a layout where content from a component can be dynamically injected. This is useful when you want to have a consistent layout structure but allow specific page or component to contribute content to specific section of the layout. Sessions are defined in Blazor layout file by using the session outlet um, tag. All component or pages can also inject that content into by using the session content. So we have the session outlet and we have session content to inject it. Let's have a look with example of this. You can see from the page that this is just a .NET 8 web project. If you don't know how to create that, it's very simple. You click on the file the new project and here we have to choose the template for blazer web app and now with this um, give it a name click on next and for this interactivity type i just i chose server and i'll get it created so that is what i did now when this page rendered you have this um, template or this project template structure in here you could see when what I did was I created one component known as product. Now with this product, this is what I did. First of all, I created a model. So this is a product model. And now this product model comprises of these properties, ID, name, description, and image. I had some images here, and these images are box. Okay, ladies box. So they're over here. If you want to create a simple e-commerce app, um, that is what I want to show um, you using the section outlet. The main motive here it is that we want to add product to cart and we want to use a section outlet um, to display the count of the product. In normally or uh, from the previous ones using .NET 7, .NET 6 and um, etc. You need to create a state so you can handle the count. Spe uh, especially when you want to display the count in another component. If it is the same component, fine, you can do that. But if you want to render the count of items in that cart into the, in another component, it becomes a problem. That is when you have to use the state. But this time around, you're not going to do that. With the help of this new feature, that is a section layout, we can just render the section component inside the section outlet. That's what we're going to have a look. So with this product um, model, we have these properties and this. Now, when I go to the component of product list .reza, you can see from the down here that I'm making a create an instance of a list of product. And now when the page initializes, I want to call this product list. So there's a method and now this method is going to call this product list. So there's a load data. So this method is going to populate the um, data to this product list. And that is what exactly you see over here. So check this. You can see from here that we are creating a new instance of this product list defined on top here. And now we are making, we are populating the values in here. So these are the records for each um, product. 
So you can see we have the ID, we have the name description. And now with the image, what I did was I just have to, I grab the name of this image and now dump it over here. That is not actually the case because normally you have to upload images to the server or you can just convert them into bht 4 string and now save them. This is just a practical purpose to explain how to use this section um, layout or section outlet and our section content. Okay, so that's what I focus in. Now we have this list populated and that is what you see right here. We have about six items in this uh, product list. So when the page loads and it gets populated, that is what we are doing. You can see we are looping through this list and displaying over here. So you can see we have this iCard item and that is an image. We are looping through it over here. I want to display each image with each description and we have a button known as add to cart. So well, let's say the user want to add this to the cart. It has to click on this. And now as soon as you have this button, the page becomes interactive. So you have to use one of the render modes, either interactive server or interactive auto, right? So that is an auto interactive. You can input over here. But for now, since we choose the, the interactivity type of server, we have it set on our page already. Or you can even, even just put it on top here. Okay, so when this button is clicked, what are you going to do? We have to create an event so we can wire it up to this button. And this button has a parameter that is an item. This item is in the form of, check it over here, it was in the form of product. So we have to have an instance of a product model to receive this item from this button or this event being wired up. Now let's check. So when it comes down here, that is what we are doing. Now, with this, this else statement, it is when the page is empty or when this product is empty, that is why you want to display this. But this will happen when you have a streaming content. So for now, we can just remove this. That is not part of what you want to do. Okay, so we've removed that. Now, when you come down here, we have this method. Let's look up for this method. And that is the method over here. So we see from here that we are also creating the same list of products. And now with this product, we are giving a name as my card items. So with this card items, we initialize it to new list. And now as soon as this method is invoked, you can see it is coming in with this product. Remember, it is an item coming in here and it is in the form of product. So you have to also receive it. After doing that, we add it to this list. Now, after adding to this list, we want to save but you want to set the count of this item to local storage. You know, when you save item or when you save value to local storage, anytime the browser is open, you can still retrieve the value. So you want to display this value in another component or in another page. So it is advisable to save this product into the local storage. You can actually put it in the um, database. You can store it over there too as well. But for now, we are going to store into local storage. But to store the count of the item into local storage, you have to invoke or you have to inject this IGS runtime. Because it's a JavaScript method that you're going to make a call to. We have to inject this IGS runtime. Then from this, we have a method known as set count or set cut count. We pass in the count of these items. So this is a list of cuts. Now the items over here, the quantity. We pass it into this as an integer and now we're going to set it or save it to local storage. Let's have this method and see. So this is a method. Now, if I open this method, this is what we are doing. You can see we have this await js.invoke async. Now we want to, since we're going to store it to local storage, we want to convert this into string and now we set this to local storage. So local storage.set item. There are so many ways of using this. You can create a separate method for this. Or you can also use a blizzard local storage by Crescenti. It is also a package that you can install um, to do that. I have a video done on um, those. So let's use this for now as a simple one. Now, that is the name that we are giving to the count. We are giving to the, uh, the key. Now, in local storage, it has a key and now the value. So that is a key and that is a value. So if you want to retrieve the value from the local storage, you have to get the key. And now it's going to um, correspondingly return the value. Okay, so the value here is going to be the cat count. And that is a method that we are calling. So you see this method, when we call, we need to specify an, a parameter as integer. And that's exactly what we are doing here. So in this, we also set it to local storage. 
So as soon as I click on any item, it gets added to the list of item here as a cart. Then it also store the count of this into the local switch by having the key and I'm setting the value as a cart count. So when you do that, we'll be able to set the item inside the local storage. Now let's have a look on how to retrieve the item. So you can see we have this await get cart count. So here we're going to retrieve the item. In doing so, we have to create um, a variable here known as cart quantity. Now with this cart quantity, we create this method known as get cart count. And now with this get cart count, you can see from here that since this is coming in from a string format, because when setting we set it to a string, so um, this is the key. It is coming in with a string, so we have to convert it into integer. That is why we are using this int dot pass. Aside from that, we create this instance. We come to this. Don't worry. Now we store the the value from this um, key here, which has been converted into integer into this cat quantity. We've created a value here. That's a variable, and I will set this as a variable's value. Okay. Now, once you are done with this, we can just inject this somewhere else. So you see, we have a span on top of this um, content. We want to set this over here. So when you run this, you're going to see something displayed on top here. That's a cat quantity. Let's try this and see. So once our page is loaded, we go to the product tab. And I can see we have our product here. So that's what I'm talking about. You see, we have this my cat. And now we have the current count of this cat quantity, it is zero. So when you take a look, you can see here, we have it as integer. And now the initial value for this, it is zero because we haven't assigned any item or any value to this variable. So initial um, value here, it is zero. And that is what exactly what you see on top of this content. So that's what you see here. Now, if I click on this add to cat, let's have a look with this. So you can see this is going to increase by one. Because it's going to set to local storage. And if I right click and go to inspect element, the JavaScript method that we invoke at local storage or set item, click on application, and you can see we have my cat count, we have it one. If I click on the next one, you can see it has changes toward two. And we have the count updated up to two. That's fine. But the problem is maybe you, you don't want to display this, the cat count within the same page. You want to display it in another component. Now, this top here it is coming from the page layout. So, is it possible that you can update or set this to the another component here to get it updated? So, as soon as I click on add to count, it also gets updated. Yes. At first, we used to um, use a state container to do that. That is where you have to create a method, you invoke a method, and I have to subscribe to the page. So, it gets rendered or refreshed anytime an event is being wired or called up. But as I speak, since we have the new.NET 8 Blazor, we have the component known as the section layout, the section outlet, and the section content. We can use that to render or achieve the same. And that is what we're going to have look next. So we have achieved this successfully. Now let's go in there and I'll try this out as well. Now, when the page reloads, we want to, you can see, when the page reloads, we haven't clicked on any cut, but we are still having the quantity here. We still uh, maintain the state of this cat. How did we achieve that? So when you check a component, you can see that when the page load, this is what I'm doing. We have the items in this cat already set, and this is just a static. So normally you have to set this into a local storage, or you can put this in the database. Now here we have a static variable created as an in-memory, and that's where we have our items in. When the page reloads, you can see we are calling this method. So anytime the page reloads, it is calling this method to populate the current data or the product in it. So we can also populate the count of that product and assign it to this. This is my cat items. As soon as you add any, it gets stored into the static count here. Now send this a static count, a static list of product as my cat items. Even when we load it, this static here is not going to allow it to clear its value. It content is going to retain. So we can just make a count here and assign the count to this cat count as an integer um, um, integer variable set over here. So that is the reason why as soon as we reload the page, you still have 
account being retained. So I click on this, I go to the home. Now I can just return to the product and you can see it still has the same cart item here. Okay, let's have a look with this using the section outlet and the section content tags. Now let's go to the project. And in order for us to do that, you have to create a service, let me say a service with dependency injection. So we can transport the count of this into the next component. The reason behind this is you see that we are rendering um, Blazor server application. This is a Blazor server because the mode on top here it is what? Render mode as interactive server. So it is a Blazor server mode that we are creating. Now in creating Blazor server, you know that if you want to have access to JavaScript, unless the page or the application is ready before you can have access, and we cannot call a JavaScript method to get item from the local storage when the page initializes, because here the page it is not ready for the browser or for the client. So we have to use the next page lifecycle method that is known as the on after render async. So on after render async, when you use that method, what you're going to happen here is the page is going to render before we have access to that method. So all they're going to have the method state, but it won't be able to refresh or reload or change the value over here. So if here it is zero, as soon as the page renders, you're going to have this integer as maybe five or the current count. But it will update this because by that time, this page might have already rendered. Okay, so we can't use that. What we can do here is to use um, a state service with um, dependency injection. And that is what I did for this. So you go to Solution Explorer. Now you see I created this class here that is known as cat service. So cat service contains only just one property and that is known as cat count. After creating this, in order to use this all over in any page, you have to register this in the program.cs file by using the singleton. So it can create eight instances once and make it available for all components. Okay. Now, after doing this, we can now go to the page and now in inject it. So we have to set the value for this cart quantity in this cart service. So we can do that from the home. So in here, you can see we are injecting the interface and I create an instance in here. After injecting this, we go back to, no, that is a, not the home. Let's go to the product list. So the product list, we inject it on top here. You see, we are injecting it. And now after injecting it, as soon as we add add to cut, that is where we are adding item or we are increasing the cut item. So when we do that, we see we are calling this method. Check here. As soon as we call this method, that is get cut from the, or set it, to the local storage and now also here get it count so as soon as we call this method we can now inject or use or set the value to the state that is a cat service cat count property so when you check here you can see cat service dot cat count we set it to this cat quantity because this is going to get the cat from the local storage and now we can now populate or get the value because here, the cat count here contains a value that is going to be an integer. And we can assign this cat to this service cat count. So anywhere that you call this service, it's going to have the, the value of this cat quantity. So after doing this, we quickly go to the home component. Now doing the home component in here, you can see that we are injecting this as well. Since we created an instance of a singleton, we still have the same instance and now we can just pass it in over here. But the next question is, where from this? To inject this, let's, let's have a look with the UI. You can see we have this section over here and you actually know where this is coming from. It is coming from the main layout, the top row, isn't it? That is the default um, structure layout for this blazer. So now let's see, when you go back to this solution explorer, check this main layout from this component layout and on this main layout component, you can see we are using this section outlet. So this is just a container that allowed any component of a section name or section a content to pass in here. So we see that we are injecting 
this that's the microsoft.asp.netcore.component.session.session.layout um, so we can even remove all this and now inject this on top as a using statement so here we can just remove this then control period we can just inject this on top and it still works now here what we are doing here is we need to specify the section name now the name that we are specifying here it is a cut quantity so in order to use the section at least we have to use the name that is why we are giving it a unique name now we go back to the product list and anywhere we can now cut so we can also cut all this and now in here control period we can we're going to use also the same using statement so you see we specify the session content now in order to make a reference to that session outlet you need to specify the section name here and the name must be the same as you specify in the section outlet so this is going to be the container and this is going to be the value okay so in it we're going to specify the service now this is the count cut service so we can specify the cut service count or we can specify this cut quantity as a um, property here here we have access to the cut service and we also have access to the property so we can specify any one that we want but when you go to the home component so let's save this when you go to the home component that section we do not have access to this cut quantity we only have access to the service so we need to use a service and that is exactly what we are doing here we inject this cut service and now we also call the same session content so let's remove this so we can inject this using statement so control period let's inject this so we specify the same section name in here i hope you are getting it and now in here you see we have this cut service so we specify the cut service dot a property known as cut count now since this property has been initialized and assigned a value to it and we also injected as a singleton so the instance that is created and assigned the value we can still retrieve it over here and that is that makes the page also reload or get the current value as soon as you click on the button also when you check this product list as soon as we add the item we call this from the local storage and then we get it from the local storage we are navigating to itself to get the page reload so we can get the refresh or the current state of this cut quantity now that's all that we've done so what we focus here was creating or searching the creating the section outlet here by specifying the section name and now in order to use the section outlet name you need to specify session content and then specify exactly the same name that you specified in here and that is what we did to um set the name in the, as you can see session content and now we specify the name and now when you go to the same home.razor we did the same and we also specify the name now let's save this again and now let's reload this page and see all right so you can see that as soon as the page loads we have my card set as what zero because we have no item in a database or in the local storage so if i click on product we have the product being loaded over here and you can see we have to the same count now if i click on this you can see the page will load so we have access count to one and also we have the count over here now this is coming from the next component or new component using the section outlets and the session content and that is the reason why we have this we can also create another one you can see so as soon as i add it gets increased and we can also do that as well yeah so that is the the, the way to use a session um outlet and the session content i'll put this project on the github so you can just go in there and now um, clone it and i have a look with the code as well thank you so much for watching this video and i believe i'll meet you in the next video